it's time to go and meet some wildlife. At least get a good look close up with them. Let's go to South Africa. The Malamata Game Reserve was originally a big game hunter's paradise. Thankfully today you can only shoot the amazing wildlife here with a camera. And close-ups are the order of the day. It's located in South Africa's eastern Transvaal region, inside the Kruger National Park. And the reserve's accommodation comes in various styles. I like the cosy feel of this jungle hut. It also provides a perfect viewing spot for watching the wildlife right from your own front door. You can spot a baby elephant getting ready to tug at another tree, or a shy bushbuck foraging nearby. What do you think of that? Or maybe some mischievous baboons keeping a curious eye on you. It's an amazing place. Most important to me is that Mala Mala provides proper security and safety. And if you're out looking for the big five, that is buffalo, rhino, elephant, lion and leopard, safety is utmost. And it really is important to follow every instruction that the experienced ranger driving you around gives to you. After all, they're there to inform and to protect you. And with good reason. A number of occasions the lions did come off second best. Um, if they maybe catch a young buffalo at the back of the herd as the herd ran off, um, the, of course the young buffalo would bellow and the rest of the herd would hear and they'd come back to basically save the youngster. And lions would often end up with tails between their legs. The giraffes too can be solitary because I, I saw one today and, and I, I haven't thought, well, where's the rest of the herd? Yeah, yeah. Um, there's no sort of set social structure with giraffe. Um, you might find a, a large group of young males together. Um, bachelor males who haven't sort of just reached who haven't reached adulthood yet. This is how close you can get. The dog of blood in them. You see on her on the one the lioness on the right hand side, the big one, on on her on her left hand leg, mm. on her chest, it's sort of pinkish. Yeah, yeah. A bit of blood. Yeah. And the young male on the left, he's got a bit of blood in his paw left. Left paw there. Yeah, no so they've had breakfast and they've come down for a drink, huh? Well, if you want to know more, here are the contacts for Malamata Game Reserve or contact South African Tourism. It's an experience you won't forget easily. Well, I did say we'd get pretty close to the lines, didn't I? All right, well, it's time to move on. Let's go to a place I really love. It's such a scenic country. I lived and worked in New Zealand for three years and I have a great affection for the nation and for its people. And it's not just the big cities. I mean, they have their own attractions. Auckland, Wellington, Christchurch, of course they do. And other cities too. But I like getting away into nature and some of the natural attractions there, because of the nature of the country, are just outstanding. Take the Coromandel Peninsula, a glorious scenic and historic gold mining location. Less than a three hour drive in a car or mobile home down and around from Auckland. These glimpses of this breathtaking area speak for themselves.
Further south on the North Island, there's the evidence of nature at work. Bubbling away in the geothermal area around Rotorua. Sites include the Maori village, buried by a 19th century earthquake. And there are these strange formations inside the Waiatapu Thermal Park. High above the city of Wellington from Newlands is a magnificent view of the harbour and the southern tip of the North Island, where a four-hour ferry ride through Cook Strait lands passengers and their vehicles at the top of the South Island. From the wharf at Picton, it's then only a short drive to one of my top spots in the entire country, Kaikoura. This is where the beach drops away to over 2,000 metres deep as it joins the Hikarangi Trench. It's not surprising that whales and dolphins are also attracted to this abundance of marine life, and they're now the main tourist attractions in Kaikoura, as boatloads of people head out to spot sperm whales surfacing or diving and to view the antics of playful dolphins, seen here as part of a pod of 300 dusky dolphins. Across over on the western side of the island, there are other amazing sites to be found, including the majestic Mount Cook, as is the drive further south through central Otago, onto places such as the Kawarau Gorge, which gave rise, or should I say fall, to the fad of bungee jumping. Then there's the jewel at the end of the gorge, Queenstown, another scenic destination where a cable car ride provides a stunning outlook across Lake Wakatipu. For those ready to witness the southern Fiordland, a journey further south and then up across to the west coast opens up Milford Sound well worth the boat ride to the area where it meets the Tasman Sea. So let's go back to Queenstown because I want to show you something which is very special and of great concern to many travellers and to those people who believe that we should have close encounters with animals in their natural environment. And this is a place I'm going to show you right now. It becomes part of this episode's Journo's Journal. As I mentioned, when you take the cable car ride in Queenstown, you enjoy a magnificent vista of what this place has to offer. Now, apart from the remarkable mountain range, there are also smaller mounds in the foreground. One of them is Deer Park Heights. It's above the suburb of Kelvin Heights. And for many years since the 1970s, visitors to Queenstown were able to take the short drive around to Kelvin Heights and then enter an absolute natural wonderland filled with different animals which would approach you as you walked around. I visited there a few years back with my son Dylan. Others came to see where the scenes from blockbuster movies had been filmed. This is Fred, he's camera shy. They didn't use him in the little oh. An entry fee of $20 was the only cost placed in an automatic toll box at the gate. Everyone believed it to be the greatest natural travel adventure, especially for children, that you could enjoy just about anywhere. Hello? Are you leading the delegation to talk to us, eh? What do they want with us? People who flew into Queenstown could view Deer Park Heights from the other side as they arrived at the airport there. All visitors to the park got to see the animals up close and roaming free, including deer, alpaca, llama, sheep, miniature horses and donkeys. For adults and children alike, this was a very special experience. At the top of the 800 hectare park there appeared what looked like a temple of enlightenment. He taught me that to juggle you need two hands. Actually it was supposed to be a Korean prison, a movie set created back in 1986 for the Walt Disney movie The Rescue. Scenes for other movies such as the 
Wolverine, X-Men hit, and the blockbuster Lord of the Rings epic were also filmed in this perfect location with its remarkable backdrop. The owners of the Lake Vista Bed and Breakfast, which offers a perfect view of Deer Park Heights from across the lake, gave it wide publicity. And a local operator, Deer Park Safaris, ran guided tours there. But then in late 2009, the owners of the park, Gene and Frank Mee of Kelvin Heights, decided to close it. Everybody was taken by surprise, and since then, visitors familiar with the park have arrived in Queenstown, disappointed to learn that they could no longer take their children there. According to the local newspaper, the Otago Daily Times, the owners didn't close it to sell the property. Their only comment was that they were just getting too old, so they were giving up. But what a waste of a precious natural attraction. Now, naturally, the owners have the right to do what they like with their own property, but if they don't want to sell it, why not lease it and, and let their amazing concept be enjoyed by others? Well, I know from living and working in this beautiful country of New Zealand that the Kiwis are generous people, and it just seems totally out of character that they would deny, especially children, such a great place to get up close to animals. It seems to be a waste of a great asset in that regard. So I want you to do something about it. So I suggest that if you feel the same way, Twitter the New Zealand Herald. And respectfully ask just this. Please, Gene and Frank Me, reopen Deer Park Heights. So that's all for this episode, but next episode we're going to be very colourful. We're going to look at the colours of autumn, or fall, in different locations. In the meantime, wherever you are in the world, just remember, everything's going to be okay. And a sense of humour is always your best travelling companion.